Like, we're saying punditry since 2018. So when did the trolling actually start? Then? Well, like, it didn't just start last week. Um, no. Obviously, I came out with that post um, only, what, seven, eight days ago. Yeah. Um, but it's been pretty much persistent over the last while. Um, and it's the same comments over and over. Some people might might say, oh, was that an overreaction to an article? But it was just the accumulation of so much stuff over the last couple of years that it just got so, so tiring and draining. And I think it just hit me last weekend that I was like, I can't take this anymore. I was, I, I said to my my mum, my sister, my husband that that was it. I was quitting. I wasn't doing the Sunday game anymore. It wasn't worth the hassle. It wasn't, it wasn't worth all the upsetness. I was meant to have a day off last Sunday and instead I was crying. I was upset. I was doubting myself and it was massively affecting me. Um, and I suppose then this day last week mm. I was in for an antenatal appointment and I kind of composed myself that little bit more and I maybe got that fight back into me and I said, look, I'm going to just write down my thoughts on, on my notes in my phone and that's where kind of the post stemmed from then, really. So let's just make sure people know, you're a four-time <laughs> All-Ireland champion. Yeah. I was speaking to Avani Quillen <laughs> yesterday and she says every single time the one person that I learn something off when it comes to the game of hurling, it is Ursula Jacob. She is well-known for knowing everything about this game. <laughs> the mad rules, absolutely everything. So that's it. You are considered an expert by men and women in this field. Simple as that. What sort of um, what sort of things have you been trolled about? What sort of messages do you get? Yeah, it's the same comments over and over. As I said, it's always to do with my Wexford accent, something that I can't change. Because no one in the world of GAA has an accent, you know, I don't think, <laughs> Ursula. No. no. Colin the Gooch Cooper has no accent <laughs> at all. Like, what, what do they expect? Like, what would they just... Don't like your Wexford accent. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's, uh, do they all want us to be robotic, dress yeah. the same, sound the same? Because to me, that would be a very, very boring programme if we all looked and sounded the same. Exactly, so yeah. it's the same thing over and over. Don't like her accent, don't like her voice. And then a big, big issue is obviously that you're a woman speaking about... Commenting on, on a, what is perceived yeah, as a Yeah, I should sport. stay in my lane and speak about camogie um, because that's what I played. <laughs> God forbid, you know... You'd I'd have, have an opinion. I'd have an opinion on, on hurling. And to me, that's... I, I can't believe we're in 2022 and we're still having a conversation where why can't I have a conversation about hurling as much as Liam Sheedy or Jackie Tyrrell can talk about a camogie game? To me, it shouldn't matter. As long as you're knowledgeable, as long as you know your stuff... That's mm. what counts to me. And I'm able to give my opinion. I'm able to voice my opinion. And, you know, I'm not there to make up numbers. I'm not there for tokenism. Um, and I suppose I just, that's where the whole statement came out last week because to me, it's just becoming so, so tiring. And can you put it in context of why you felt that you had to put in that statement, why, why you had to put out that statement? What happened just the day before or before that? Yeah, so I had been working for the Kilkenny Clare All Ireland semi final, and basically last Sunday morning, the day after, which was meant to be my rest day, I was looking forward to watching Limerick and Galway in the other semi final. And I was scrolling just very casually on Facebook, and I saw this art article with a headline saying Ursula Jacob was hammered on the Sunday game. Straight away, I looked at the headline and I, I was like, hammered for what? I, the doubts came in straight away into my head, said, what did I say? Did yeah. I say something so yeah. controversial? Yeah. So I went into the article and it was basically based on two, two individuals who had tweeted that had about 15 followers between the two of them. This is what got me. Yeah. So it's clickbait. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Clickbait. They, just, they want you to click onto the article. And I suppose why I was so annoyed and upset was this particular page that had posted it had what, 270,000 people liking the page. So it was going out to a much wider audience yeah. than just to one or two people. Yeah. And I said, well, if I saw the headline, the headline implied that I had made a holy show yeah. of myself mm -hmm. on the Sunday game. I'd said something way out there. And when I went into the article, I couldn't believe how, un you know, how untrue, um, how it wasn't any way factual. It was based on two individual tweets. And I just said... People have said to me over the last couple of years, you know, don't don't let it annoy you. Just, you know, ignore them. But there's only so much ignoring you can do mm. when it's impacting you and your family start to see you upset. And it starts impacting on them as well because mm. at the end of the day, I'm just a human being trying to do a good job. The funny thing is they never, they never really comment on my knowledge of the game or yeah. my analysis. It's always focusing on the fact that I'm a woman or I don't like her Wexford accent. 
That's always what it is. Yeah. And this is, it's just to take two comments and turn it into a whole article for clickbait. Yeah. It just seems ethically wrong, but we were discussing. Yeah. Sue Barker retired yesterday from being the face of yeah. tennis in the UK. And she's done so many other sports. When she first started, 30 years ago, yeah. she was hit with so much sexism. And she had, did nothing except do a brilliant job mm. yeah. for 30 years. But we haven't come any further. Like, we literally haven't come any further. They're never given out about your knowledge. So you did put out this statement and kind of say, OK, listen, this is my job. You're affecting my life, all this kind of stuff. You've had huge support. Massive. And I think that's the biggest thing I've been blown away by. You know, it's a week since I put out that post. And I've had people, lots from far and near, um, lots of people that I work with in the sports world, right across Ireland. And I think that's kind of blown me away. And it's really kind of perked me up as well because... When, you, when you're kind of nearly doubting yourself and you get a knock to your confidence, it is lovely yeah. to, to get nice comments and people saying, look, you know, don't, don't let them get at you. You're doing a good job. And I think I've taken back some of the power, to be honest, because I'm like, look, I'm not saying the trolling or the comments are going to stop here and now because I put out that uh, yeah. post. Yeah. But I do feel better in myself that I stood up for myself because I am someone like that. I'm not going to let someone a coward hiding behind a keyboard, you know, knock me, knock my confidence. Because as I said in the in my post, at least I'm brave enough to go on national television, stand by in my opinion. They're hiding behind a, a computer or, the, or a phone. And the website who did publish that have apologised. Yeah, and, and to be honest, I wasn't looking for an apology. Um, and firstly, I didn't think it was really an apology anyway. Um, there were so many <laughs> ifs and buts in yeah. it that... I wouldn't really count it as an apology, but I, I'm just looking for a change in action. Mm. Will they do better the next time? Or is this just because I called them out over it, they released a half yeah. apology. apology? So w what's going to be their action going forward? And this is not just about this page. It's not just about Ursula Jacob. This is across the board. Mm. It's not just in like the Sunday Game Pundits or media or whatever. This is affecting like on uh, kids in schools, yeah. online bullying. Like... It's just getting out of control. Social media is brilliant, but it's so toxic oh, in other it, ways. It can be. And I know you've got lots of support from Marty Morrissey yeah. and your other colleagues like that yeah. who are fully supportive Ooh, of uh, you. Ooh, Paul McGrath. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm being honest, that was probably... I was I was in particularly very happy, and my husband as well, <laughs> who is obsessed with Paul McGrath, was, was very jealous of that. Um, but it's lovely to see people who are so prominent in sport and media coming out backing me and like you know I, I never really expected that I was so so nervous putting the post out because I'd never kind of put myself out yeah. in that way but I just said you know you have to sometimes stand up for yourself and like I'm I'm expecting my first child yeah. in, in like October. Like you don't need this stress at the yeah. moment. No and, and I suppose I said to myself well look at I, while I was sitting in the hospital waiting to go in for my appointment I said what would I want them to do? Would I want them to stand up for themselves going forward? Would they, I want to be a good role model for them as well. So um, I, I said, that, this is a good start. I think you're brilliant. I absolutely loved what you did. Before you go away, who's going to win in the men's? In the hurling? Um, look at I. <laughs> it's funny, the last time Limerick lost in the championship was against Kilkenny in yep. 2019. So I'd never write off a, a Kilkenny team in a final, but I'm still tipping Limerick. I think they're the, the strongest team out there and I think they'll do the three in a row. So. Do you think we're going to do oh, <laughs> going to be celebrations <laughs> next weekend. My mother would be delighted. In the women's, who do you think is going to... Um, I'm, sti I'm still tipping Galway. I think, yeah. I think, do you think so? Yeah, I think Galway, um, you know, they, they probably have the strongest outfit overall and uh, yeah. Cork, Kilkenny are going to be there or thereabouts, but I still reckon it's going to be Galway. OK, yeah, that is interesting because Cork do look very strong. Yeah, yeah. And, and sure, look, any team with Davy Fitz... In the background as well, he's gonna he's gonna be <laughs> delighted that I'm tipping Galway and, and Cork going in as underdogs. <laughs> That's all going in. Ursula, Ursula, thank you so much for no joining matter. us this morning. An absolute pleasure to talk to you and fair play. Best of luck with the baby, but it was a brilliant post. Thank you so much for chatting to us this morning. Thanks, Lovely a million.